morning, 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 morning. It's the way Singapore wakes up. Wake up, Glenn, wake up. Angel, and the Flying Dutchman. Wake up in the morning, feeling like Kiss 92's Big Show. Good morning, Singapore, and welcome to the biggest and best breakfast show in the world. And today it's uh, the Big Show and the Big Show TV Extra Large. Because uh, we've got close to an hour with Dr. Geraldine Tan, our award-winning psychologist from the therapy room. And then we're going to get Mr. Joseph Schooling join us. Yes. From uh, 9 to, well, close to 10. So make sure you have everything in front of you, your coffee, your breakfast, everything, because you're not going anywhere for the next one and a half hours. That's true. That's true. Actually, we wanted to invite you to come into the studio, Jerry, because I don't think you've met Joseph, right? Not no. yet, right? Yeah. No. See, everyone wants to take photos with him. When he retired, oh, oh, everyone's like posting, posting photos, photos with right? Joseph and all that. It's like, <laughs> uh, oh, so predictable. Well, you know, I'm probably going to be doing the same thing after I take a photo with him today because I've never met him either. No way. I've not met Joseph. Why would oh, okay. I? No, I've never met him. Yeah, I haven't. Okay. Yeah. All right. But anyway, hey, do uh, you what? want him to call you Auntie uh, no, Angel? No. No. No, I just can't believe you even asked that. I don't mind Joseph calling me Uncle Glenn. He's called me Uncle Glenn before. I'm like, I actually feel honoured, you know, for him to call me Uncle Glenn. Okay, you can feel the way you feel. I'll okay. feel the way I feel. Uh, so, Dr. Jerry, <laughs> since we're talking about Joseph, we're also talking about uh, success, but success on our own terms. Yes, yes. So, I didn't know that Joseph is coming in after, uh, but I did have part, uh, as in I did have it, him in mind as I did part of it. Oh, yeah, nice. Because okay. over the weekend, you know, I was uh, in Taiwan with the girls. Uh, so, my girl went over for a uh, Taiwan competition. So, there were seven girls. And it's very, very lovely to see them perform. But more than that, it's really learning. And there's so much to learn from these girls and the teachers also. So, felt really inspired. So, decided to do this on success you know because we had tears we had laughter also so it was quite a nice experience not scared I, All the uh jerry after the earthquake mm. y'all went to taiwan again <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so we were in Taipei. Okay. Uh, the the earthquake was in Hualien. So okay. Hualien, yeah, Hualien is was uh, or is affected very badly, but the rest of Taiwan is still living their lives. That's the difference between you and me. Yes. I I would have thought like okay, Hualien next Taipei. <laughs> so I yes. think better not. You know, it's like okay, not at this moment. Yeah. Okay. But. It's okay, lah. Huh? Right? I mean, you're yes. obviously. I mean, She's you're fine. back. Okay. Okay. Although I would have traveled up to Hualien to see that that building. Glenn. Okay. Anyway, no. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on. It's okay. not a joke. Uh, oh, it's so, not a joke. I'm so, serious. So, <laughs> Doctor Jerry, what exactly is success? Yeah. So, so I actually wanted to throw this question to both of you. You know, what does success mean to you? People always ask me that question and I hate it. You know why? Mm. Because was, I'm, I'm like so typical. See, I'm sure everyone will mention the same thing, right? It's like, what, what is success to you? And what do you think I'm going to say? I don't know. I won't. I won't. I won't. Money. Uh, okay. Mm. And it's, okay. it's horrible. You see, I hate saying that. Mm. It makes me feel like a, a, you know, like I'm so materialistic money minded. and money-minded. Mm. But... I don't know why I keep on saying that. Okay. Mm. So your measurement would mm. be money. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Angel. Um, I think success is being recognized for what you do well. Mm. Does that make sense? Recognition? This is a church, church answer. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't go to church. But yeah, recognition and for, yeah, recognition by others for what you do well. Okay, okay. I would like to hear the younger ones, Cheyenne and Shalini. Okay. Sh uh, Sh uh, Cheyenne says, please ask her on the Big Show TV. That's where we're going right now. Ariana Grande is next. <laughs> Bye on Kiss 92. Okay, we All move right, on girls. to Cheyenne and Shalini right now. Okay. What is success? What does it mean to you? Wait, let, let, um, who are you directing this question to first? Uh, uh, Cheyenne, Cheyenne or Charlene? Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Cheyenne, okay. Cheyenne. I haven't thought of my answer yet. Oh. Okay, okay. Charlene, Charlene then. Uh, being happy. 
Okay. Like doing everything that makes me happy is what success is to me. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that is less of a church answer than your answer. I googled church.com for an answer. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, Cheyenne's still thinking You know why? Because now she's got a few things on her mind Traffic, weather yeah. She's like okay. That's if I didn't have enough to do and then Yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> Wait, for, for, for you, if you're wondering Why Cheyenne is doing like traffic and weather That's because she's prepping for next week yeah. Because while we're in Brisbane She will be doing um, weather and, and traffic, traffic yeah. Here Yeah We'll tell you what the weather's like in Brisbane But she'll do the Singapore weather Yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So interesting. So we all have different measurements. Um, Shalini's measurement is a little bit more conceptual. So being happy, uh, doing everything that makes you happy. Mm, there is not, it's, it's really broad, right? Mm. Um, Glenn has something that is a little bit more concrete, which is using money to measure. Correct. Uh, Not saying that I have a lot of money, but I'm working towards that. And I feel like it's, it is motivating me though. I want to be successful. So I'm like going in that direction. But mm. it's not very nice mm. when I say it. Say it out loud. Yeah. No worries. No worries. And Angel has somewhat of a measurement, so recognition for what you do well. Yeah. So what what kind of recognition? I though? mean when, when when I said recognition I it, it out loud it kind of sounds like I need to be validated for the stuff that I do but not so much. Uh, for me the recognition would be by my own measure people for example, now that I'm doing radio, people recognizing my voice as the third voice on the show and saying they enjoy the show. Uh, you know, people saying, oh, they saw the posters and, and, and what a great advertising campaign it is. Uh, you know, and just people saying they enjoy listening to the kind of content that we put out. You know, or mm. or they've or they've mm. seen an Instagram video that I've put out of say a hotel or a restaurant, and they said, "Oh, you know, I went there because I saw what you put out, and I thought, you know, it was a great review, whatever." So it's kind of like recognition for the work that I do mm. that impacts mm. other people's lives. Mm. So not just validation, right? Okay, yeah. okay. So it's interesting because. If I were to turn it around and ask, so if let's say there are other parts of your life, um, work, family, mm. or in other areas that um, you know you don't do so well in, would that affect how you feel, even if you've attained? Uh, for Glenn, the amount of money that mm. you want for Angel, that uh, recognition that you have described, mm. would you still feel as happy? Successful or happy, right? Mm. Or, or successful, yeah. Glenn? I try to do things that, uh, that I'm good at. Yeah. You know? Because if you do something that you're not good at and you're like, working so hard to try and be good and mm. you can't then mm. i start to feel like, like that affects failure. my confidence you know what yeah, i mean it's like yeah. it's like you know i'm i i'm called the ego man for a reason right because <laughs> i have this you know i'm almost like a narcissist when it comes to my uh, image like on radio and yeah. how i feel i happen to like feel like you know i was born to do this job yeah. that kind of thing right so when i started taking up brazilian jiu-jitsu and i sucked at it and i was getting smashed by everybody i was so demoralized it affected mm. my confidence in what i did for a living mm. you know what i mean it's mm. like all of a sudden i'm not as good as i thought I you was. were you know, and, mm. and golf is very humbling as well. Yeah. Right? Because I love playing golf, but I kind of suck at it. I can't seem to, to get many things right. But you still you know, enjoy it. But I enjoy it so much because of the company. Yeah, and all that. the whole process. But yeah. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is another story altogether, you know. Mm. It's like you're playing chess on the, on the mats. And, so you've and, stopped. And I, I've, no, but I've stopped because of injury. But mm. I can tell you that that was very humbling as well. People say golf is a very humbling um, mm. sport. But uh, let me just tell you, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a very humbling sport as well, if you suck at it. But, but if you're good, it really raises your, your confidence to a, a, another level. But I get what Glenn is saying. Like, why would you put yourself through something that you're not, like good, at. That, that you're not good at? 
You know what I mean? What is the lesson here? Humbling is obviously be, being uh, gaining humility and stuff like that is a good thing. But don't you want to succeed at everything that you do? Yes, yeah, which is why I'm asking what the definition of your success mm. means, you see. So for Glenn, you know, very interesting that you pick up uh, the golf part and uh, one would think that you're good in golf because you speak about it, you share about it, but you today you've said that you're no good at it, yet you enjoy it. So mm. what That's does fantastic. success mean to you in terms of golf the go uh, mm. the area of golf making money because i'm losing money because i'm not good at golf so when we bet on the golf course i'm you know i'm kind of losing my oh yeah so i'm going in the same direction yeah actually. okay <laughs> wait traffic's coming up <laughs> okay stand by <laughs> Traffic. On the PIE towards Changi Airport before Upper Bukitima Road, there's an accident, so keep an eye out for that and drive safe. Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for today is award-winning psychologist from the therapy room, Dr. Geraldine Tan. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? He tried to make a kissy sound. Actually, also, uh, I, that kissy sound is also for my mom because she's celebrating a birthday today. Oh. Oh, is oh. mommy awake now? I think she is. She is. Should we yeah. sing her birthday song? It's okay. La. I'll sing no? her birthday song. Okay, oh, yeah. Let's yeah. go. What's your mommy's Happy, name? Oh. Uh, Patsy. Patsy. Okay. Patsy. One, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dearest mommy. Patsy. Happy birthday to you. I love you, mom. She says, don't mention her age. She's 78. Everybody. No, oh, my goodness. Uh, Glenn Ong. <laughs> Oh, okay. I always irritate her like that. Yes, I can. Uh, yeah, you irritate everybody. Okay, by the hey. way, Dr. Jerry, uh, we're talking about success and <laughs> what success means to each person. Because, like, when yeah. I read when I read your topic for today, it says success on my own terms. It's interesting because a lot of people measure success on other people's terms. Correct. Correct. And many, many of the teens that I see who are very stressed, very depressed, uh, if you ask them, they measure success through their grades. And mm. it is sad because they are obsessing and they are um, chasing after a grade that they don't even believe in. But it's because someone else says that they need to attain that grade or they need to do a performance or they need to do something or other. So they are uh, behaving in a way that is um, that is for another person and not for themselves. So they wake up every day being very, very miserable. But you say that and it's very interesting you say they are chasing a grade that they do not believe in. When you say they don't believe in that grade, do you mean they feel that they cannot achieve that grade? Or it's not something that they want. That was, uh, it's not them, their goal. It, it is not their goal. It is not their goal. No, but can they, they achieve want, that grade? Can they achieve? They, are they capable they, of achieving that grade? Yes. Yes. Many okay. of them are able. Yeah, but because they are chasing that and obsessing over that, they are very scared that they would lose it. They might lose the grade in mm. the in in uh in turn they would lose the maybe affection of whoever that is asking to them to chase. Uh, many of them expand it to society. Society expects me to pass my O levels, get my IB, get my A levels. If not, I am nothing. I'm nothing in the society. Mm. So it is. Uh, societal terms that they are looking at and they measure themselves by societal standards mm. um, which is very distressing for many of them right yeah so it can it can be for grades it can be even for gender you know so that's why many of them feel very demoralized with you know the if they are uh, in the LGBT group mm. um, yeah so so it could be a variety of things 
Okay. It yeah. could be size also. So that's why a lot of them have a uh, body bo body dysmorphic disorder. Issues, yeah. yeah. Size. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah body sure. image issues, not disorder yet, but body image issues. Yeah. How much? I think the eating? only time. I, look, before you know, I mean, we used to, you know. I mean, in the past, old-fashioned, right? Mm. Everyone kind of feels like, uh, you know, if they see a friend or whatever and a friend is putting on some weight, they feel like it's almost their responsibility to tell their friends, hey, I think you're putting on a little bit of weight. And mm. then their friends will, will, like, go on a diet or whatever. But these days, you can't even do that, right? No, you can't. It's not uh, no. politically correct, I think, you know, to, yeah. to do something like that, you know? So, sometimes I, I, I worry about this because how do you then address it? Like, for example, if you have a child and you know that your child is perhaps maybe, um, you know, overeating yeah. and all that. Yeah. In the past, my parents would just go like, hey, Stop eating so much. Yeah, huh? yeah. Tell you next time when you go to school, huh, your PE sessions and all that, you won't be able to perform. You'll be you in the fat the club other. or whatever it is and they I, called. I used to think before, okay, someone is kind of looking out for me because yeah. frankly speaking, you look at yourself in the mirror, you you don't see, see yourself. Mm. You know, sometimes mm. you need someone to tell you that. But these days, you, you know, can't. You, it's not, you, you yeah. can't. So I think it's a little bit of a um, tricky situation these days. Huh? What do you say, Dr. Jerry? I mean, it's, I mean, if you're saying it under good intention, because yeah. it's mm. it's clearly not healthy to be overweight. Yeah. How who, do you tell someone you love? Correct. Who's the one responsible? You know. Yeah. Don't don't parents or friends around. or colleagues or whoever it is best friends have a responsibility to mm. help. Or you oh, do you wait do. for them to they not do. be able to fit through the door anymore? And <laughs> then or it's get a problem. sick even worse. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so the intentions need to be conveyed and not, uh, not we, we don't shame the person. So they, we talk about body shaming, fat shaming, isn't it? So yeah. if you, you go something like, E so fat, that's shaming mm. the other person. Of course, uh, because you, you say E. <laughs> e so fat. I mean, nobody does that anymore. Sometimes <laughs> even if you do it in, with the best of intentions, uh, they say that you're fat shaming them as well. Okay, let's continue to talk about mm. this on The Big Show TV. Um, it is... Eight seventeen. Kiss ninety two time check brought to you by Putian. Very sensitive. Yeah, like is it okay Very to start sensitive. with? You know, I love you, but you know what I mean. I mean that also yeah. is, but it it but that's it comes with strings attached. That's the thing. You know, you're saying I love you, but I need to tell you this. Do you know what I mean? It seems it doesn't seem yeah. very authentic. Because everyone's conditioned already right now the whole fat shaming thing. So whatever, yeah. you, anything you say, uh, could after that, that yeah could be yeah. misinterpreted. I okay. So today we're not talking about communication, <laughs> but, yeah. but I'm gonna take away the but because mm. you used the the word but yeah. and you mm. emphasized it. Let's try and change our buts to end. I love you and yeah. I don't want mm. you to be sick. And also don't use E and as well. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's terrible, Dr. Jerry. Why would you say something like that? <laughs> so funny, e. you. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah, so we can all try. So the, today's homework, the oh. homework came early today. So yeah. changing our butts to ends. Nothing to do with... Oh, actually, success on my terms. Let's try this. Even telling yourself, um, but I cannot do but this, but that. Let's mm. change the butts to A and D, and. Okay. It would change your sentence uh, a little bit and mm. you might see some shifts in mm. the way that you yeah, think. It's mindset, isn't it? Yeah, so a little bit of that cognition there, yes. yes. Mm. So we can try that. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned butt a few times, I'm thinking butthole. Butthole oh, surfers. Have you all heard B -B -B. of the butthole surfers? Later, you guys go and look there, up this song. It's called it? Pepper. I remember it's like one of my favorite songs by the butthole surfers. You see that right now they wouldn't be able to have a group named that name anymore. Okay, wait, later. Are they still uh, Shalni or, they still or Shine? Named that later you Google surfers. butthole surfers. <laughs> get a little bit of that song out. B -U -T -T -H -O -L -E. It's so nice. B U T T H O L E. Yeah. <laughs> Pepper. I I wanted everyone to play it, but no one really liked it except me. I would love your opinion later when when we play a little bit of a song. <laughs> okay. It's, you've right. never heard of it. No. Eh? 
butt hole surfers. The group is still making me laugh. <laughs> but in case you're having some soft boiled eggs right now and Ew. putting some pepper in, there you go. <laughs> That's the song. Peppa. That's okay. when I Sorry. go E. <laughs> right? Wait, 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 wait. The title of the song is Peppa. The name of the band is called The Butthole Surfers. Oh, also okay. ew. <laughs> Butthole Surfers. What does that it's mean? Okay. Huh? Never mind. It's okay. Let's not break it down now. Uh, okay, Dr. Jerry. Yes, we were talking about success. So what does success mean? So whose measurement is it? Whose direction is it? Whose, um, uh, yeah, who, whose result are we going for? So is it ours or is it someone else's? So once we start to define ours, so if we look at our goals, do we have our end goal in mind? I know it, early in the year we started with uh, little um, goals for the quarter, but this is not the quarterly goals. These are the, or this is the live goals, something a little bit longer, a little bit further. So what are our goals? I actually changed this word goals for the longer term ones to dreams. What are our dreams? And I really like it because um, the teens, all of us can start to fantasize a little bit and visualize our dreams. Okay. Mm. Where do you see yourself five years, ten years, um, even even further? Mm. But I'm um, I feel like a lot of parents. I don't know if it's true. Will say, mm. "Don't dream so much. You got to have a goal." But now you're saying, "Don't set those goals. Change it to dreams." So these are still goals. These okay. are still goals. It's, these okay. are goals. But I just changed the word to dreams mm. so permitting the self to dream because very often what i notice is we limit ourselves we say no we have to be practical um and then we 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 hold ourselves in a very you know a stranglehold yeah we, we start to be very restrictive we start to say no but uh we start to say you cannot do this you cannot do that it won't lead you to your goals mm. Yeah. Mm. So we want to expand that a little bit more. We want to try and say, let's dream. Let's just visualize. Let's fantasize. Fantasize. <laughs> okay. yeah, welcome back, Len. <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> yes, one word and snap. It's like it's like hypnosis for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, okay. Glenn can fantasize. <laughs> oh, whatever you fantasize, we don't really want to know. It's you know, for your own. Oh, wait, yeah. Wait, wait. Hold on. Is fantasize the appropriate word to use? Uh, it's like first you say check. dream. I don't think dream and fantasizing are the same thing. <laughs> it's like, I mean, at least in my books, it's like you ask Glenn. Uh, you know, what's what's your dream? Okay, I'll tell you. My dream is having a. A really defined six pack now okay. that I'm uh, working out, you know, but it's not defined enough. And what's your fantasy, Glenn? Oh, that one. <laughs> That's a different story again altogether. But, okay, I, but, I mean, I can't say it. But on you know, you know what? Like, as soon as it's, he said that, like, okay, the dream is, the goal is, but then once you say fantasy, yeah. it almost not just becomes... fantasy. When you say fantasy, I think fantasy island <laughs> tattoo, the plan, the plan. The plan. The plan. <laughs> no, but when you say fantasize, it's a different thing again altogether. Yeah, no. And of I, course, I when you say it. Fanta, it's a different thing again altogether. <laughs> but I well. feel like the word fantasy is almost like an unattainable dream. Do you know what I mean? Because dream, this dream, what still feel. People, this is what many people think. So in in performance work, if you um, even when you do your your uh, stage work, right? You you host and you present mm. on stage. You do need to visualize, and that's what I call you. Uh, know, visualize fantasy. everybody in the room naked. <laughs> that's fantasy, Glenn. No, 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 no. As in, like this is how what this is, this a, is how it's a trick. Yeah, how we were, we were taught because yeah. some people when they go on stage they're nervous, right? Yeah. So right. everyone is right. naked. And they are like laughing and saying. <laughs> it doesn't work for me though that whole naked thing. Nah. No, it's it's a it's no, a it's myth that one. Yeah, 
Totally. It doesn't it doesn't work for everyone. So everyone can use their own style and their own mm. methods. But that is also a fantasy. So you you fantasize externally. You can fantasize about yourself, you know, doing a really great job. Yeah, and and really owning that stage. He has a smile on his face. I, I don't know what he's. Doing. I, I don't know what's in his head. <laughs> I, 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 I still think like you know, the word. You know, f- did he just say fantasize? Fa- yeah, fantasy, yeah, fantasize. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, to it me, has that connotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But visual, and he's right though because visualize is so different from fantasize to me as well. Wow. Okay. It's very okay. different. Yeah. When you fantasize, first you hear the sound. Ding. <laughs> it's like sparkles. It's like fairy dust all over. <laughs> yes, but I, I I still love the word fantasy because it allows. So that's it, now you can see why the teens actually like it, right? Because it really permits their brain to just open up and not limit themselves. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Stand by. Mm-hmm. We're going back on air. Boom! Clap. <laughs> Jerry can perform to the song actually. Yeah. Boom. You can clap. picture her on stage dancing to the song. Sure. Kiss 92 traffic. On Thompson Road towards Newton after Marymount Road, there's an accident, so please avoid the left lane. Drive safe. That was Cheyenne Lim, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, who will be uh, in charge of traffic and weather next week when we broadcast live from Queensland. That's right. If you didn't already know, it'll be Monday through to Friday. We'll be taking you around all of Brisbane, uh, showing you all the different sights and sounds. That's and right. of course, the Big Show TV will continue as usual. We'll yeah. have guests on site. Exactly. Nicole they Kidman, be, Monday. They, oh, yes. Hugh Jackman, Tuesday. Liam. Margot Rob- Oh my God. Oh. Wednesday. Chris Hemsworth, Thursday. Thursday. Oh. And, and then the koalas and the kangaroos on Friday. <laughs> and the snakes. I hear we might have snakes as well. Really? I'm very excited. Yeah, love snakes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Jerry. We're talking about Good success morning. today. Yes. Uh, where did we and, leave and off? Uh, fantasies. <laughs> See, don't don't use that word. Glenn Glenn gets tickled when you use the word fantasies. Fantasize. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Yes. For the rest that doesn't get tickled, you can use dreams. You can use fantasy. You can use visualize. Uh, it's a direction that you work towards. So, when you want to. Um, Read success in your own terms. You need to have a vision in mind. You need to have that goal in mind. And that goal is your goal. So what does it look like to you? Define it for yourself. So that's your dream. Mm. Yeah. But a lot of parents then would bring the the teens and say, Oh, but uh, my child is not motivated. Please help my child to study. <laughs> I don't know. They wow. Think that You're like a magician. A magic skill or something, you know. And oftentimes, we, we try to listen to the parents. We try to listen to the, the, the uh, teens also, or the kids also, right? And it's not that they have no motivation. They're just not motivated in their studies. But if you listen carefully, they are motivated in something else. It could be playing the games, it could be the sports, it could be mixing with their friends. There is actually a motivation, but just not the motivation, not uh, uh, yeah, not behaving in the way that the other person wants them to behave. So it could be the teacher, it could be the parent, you know, and the, the, the children are not performing to mm. the expectations of these people right but, but we're they talking are still about, motivated we're talking about kids here but if we focus on adults then what's the motivation mm. right mm. jerry mm. what do you yes, think it right? is so, yeah it changes yeah yeah it changes it changes but we also can be motivated in other things so what are our motivation and for the areas that we don't like you know um can we redefine success in those areas? Okay, so let's redefine it. success in those areas on the Big Show TV, Jerry. All right, here's okay. Zerb featuring the Chainsmokers and Ink. This is Addicted on KISS 92.
okay. Redefining success. Mm. Oh, sorry. Redefining hold on, hold on. Success. Cheyenne has something to say. We have your song. Oh, oh, oh the yeah. Pepper song. Shall we just listen to a little just bit a little of bit? it? Okay. Okay, uh, here we go. Un- under seven seconds. The yeah. Butthole Surfers <laughs> with Pepper. Okay. Wait, okay. We cannot use seven seconds. Facebook oh, will shut oh, us down. Okay, okay, that's right. That's true, actually. <laughs> Thank you. I just love that song so yeah, much. Yeah, you can listen to it. Put it in your playlist and listen. Butthole surfers with Pepper, everyone. Listen to it today. I didn't hear them one time say Pepper. Who? Do they? Do they repeat it as a as a during the chorus? No, there's no Pepper. In and the there's song. no Pepper in the song. Yeah. Right. Okay. Got yeah. it. Like just listen from the start. The, the intro is also quite interesting. Okay. All right. Okay. Are they still around? Yeah. Butthole surfers. I, I They're seventy so, years you know. old now. So they okay, Dr. Around. Jerry, yeah, redefining okay, success. <laughs> As he searches for oh, the butthole surface. Yeah, I think there was from like 1994 when I first started um, oh, out as a radio right, okay. DJ. I um, chanced upon them. I was busy with my new success from winning the new paper That's competition. Right. So I was busy with wow. that. Wow. Around that time. Busy like um, chasing yes, all the boys busy. away. Yes. <laughs> Shoo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, go on. Sorry. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Carry on, Jerry. Oh, oh, Carry on. going to talk about re- redefining success. Yeah. Redefining success. So, yes. yes, you know, what does success mean? So, you know, if we have to complete our studies, we have to go to work. I think some of them, when they are able to redefine how it is for themselves. So, one of the <coughs> uh, mm. guys actually, you know, he was really dreading his work. But he was close to retirement. Uh, but he had to hold on because of some... Uh, monetary gains at the end of it oh, so right. when we yeah redefined it was really just going there to complete the hours and then in the evenings he could do so many other things he was a much happier person so there was something at the end of the day so the the goals was very different so it was at the end of the day he could do um, his uh, something fun for himself at the end of the week he could go diving and it was just a few more months that and he could tolerate that so the ultimate goal for him was to get that extra money hmm right yep. it okay is. it okay. is mm. yeah okay. so the, the dollar money. sense mm, money yes for whom are we talking uh, about this guy the retirement Yep, Bo- yep, bonus yep. At so the end. he was very miserable at work and he he said I can't do it but I need to hold up for another few more months okay. uh, oh, so you're saying he that. so emotionally he released that feeling of being miserable because yes. he all of a sudden realized redefined. Yep. redefined it I have just a few months left to go why don't I enjoy myself because at the end of it I'll get that bonus Correct. so if he had thought Correct. about it sooner then he would have enjoyed himself a little bit more yeah, he would okay. have. And okay. he wouldn't be so miserable. Mm. So he belonged to the category that would not have come for um, uh, counselling, you know, if he could tolerate it himself. So, you know, he couldn't and therefore he came. So he must have been quite miserable at that time. Mm. Mm. I was speaking to someone it's yesterday. Being miserable. Yeah, who, who is completely miserable. Uh, yesterday, I was who's miserable to right now listening to us? <laughs> uh, no, I mean not because of us, like we're bad or whatever, but I mean in life, you <laughs> know, you're just feeling miserable. There's so no, many people like that. A lot of that. people are going through mental wellness. I was saying, yeah. I was speaking to someone yesterday, close to me, and um, I told this person, I said, just hang on because in a couple of weeks, there's this certain thing that this person's going to be doing mm. that will hopefully change their life. Yeah. Yep. And but we yep. can only be hopeful for, for these people whom we know, right? You of know? course, of course. Right, if but we're in a good place and they're not, we try to encourage them and, and just be hopeful. But that's what, that's what Dr. Jerry was saying. If you can take little bits of positivity or goals that are kind of nearby and just bringing that person to cross that line, mm. then hopefully mm. something mm. will flip for them for the better mm. <clears throat> and then they take that next goal you're about to cry like yeah. baby no 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 no, 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 no it's just my throat and then just baby <laughs> steps to be able to just increase the positivity yeah. Yeah. in their yeah. life yeah someone yeah. needs to come up with a happy pill 
I think and so. And I don't mean like an unnatural, like a drug or whatever, like a magic happy pill. No, it's like, wow, oh, you're feeling so miserable. You're feeling so like depressed. Like endorphins and in then, a pill, like right? Like a Panadol extra, like that when you're having a headache. Uh, aren't, you there just take things, it. Aren't, aren't there things mm. out there like that already? And then, oh, okay. Man, I feel better now. Or like but something... I'm saying not medication. I'm, or something I'm just that saying. you take, something natural that you take where all your negative thoughts turn into positive thoughts. Yes. You know? That's a fantasy Some, right there. I'm talking about fantasy. Yeah. That's a good fantasy. It's a good fantasy, mm. isn't it? I mean, Dr. Okay. Jerry, wouldn't it be nice it, it, if... Well, we can. So that's why we've been talking about, you know, the, the cognition. We're talking about behavior because we can't change the feelings. So mm. we, are, we use our thoughts and behavior to help us with it. So what you're talking about is changing the negative thoughts, which we had talked about it, I think, a few sessions ago. Um, behaviorally, so if we look at quite a, uh, a number of sports people, arts people, um, they use more behavior to help them uh, change their their mindset and change their emotions. So there are three different um, uh, state of being, right? Positive, negative, and neutral, just to broadly put it. So we can take our pick so most of the time we attempt to extinguish negative experiences we say we don't want to feel negatively we don't want the negative experience so we can do that we stop the negative experience or we increase the positive experiences mm. that we have so you know we start to um, have little wins or little excitements you know to increase that uh, for some of them they choose um, just to have something very flat as long as there's no highs there's no lows that's okay so maintaining neutral experiences mm. so that's also possible yeah so the it depends on your personality and the situation also what suits that situation what suits your personality mm. yeah mm. okay so and increase yeah. positive experience extinguish <clears throat> negative experiences and maintaining neutral experiences okay mm. super mm. Uh, it's, you, it's not you have all the, the time. Hmm, yeah, no, Karen. No, you, Karen. Uh, it's not all the time, and I think you know later on when uh, Joseph is on, you can actually ask him because he can't be you know um, having positive experience all the time. You know, so sometimes it is how he deals with the negative experience. We that, should get some um, questions from Jerry. Jerry, a few questions from you for Joseph and. If you're watching right now, if you have a question for Joseph Schooling, send it to us as well. Send it to us on our Ooh. Facebook, send it to us on our WhatsApp, 88550920, whichever yeah. it is, we'll try to get it we out don't there. know whether we'll get to your questions or not, love, because we've got so many questions ourselves as well. Yeah, but Dr. Jerry, yeah, nice. give, us you some. Know, give us some. You know, so, so if I were to use Joseph, sorry, Joseph, I, I talk without you in my presence, but without, you know, without okay, you. La, Joseph, but looking at you right now, so pretty, you can say whatever you want to <laughs> say. Ask him no, whatever I you don't wanna. think so. <laughs> but, but if we talk about that 13 year old you know going overseas he has a dream but i would say that that is a fantasy at that point in time and the fantasy of winning that medal you know mm. the olympic medal yeah so that can for many 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 people it is a fantasy so with that in mind with that goal in mind with that dream in mind he swam towards it right so you know but at that point in time you know from 13 years old until now right so there's you know def definitely more than a de decade already mm. you know what does success mean at any point in time right i see I, hmm. the reason why i have a problem with the the word fantasy and now i can clearly tell you guys why tell us because yeah we first we use dream then we use fantasy right yes. jerry but i think maybe in your books yeah. it's quite close lah. Huh? dream mm. and fantasy that's why you've been using it the way you're using it but let's say uh, we talked about the fact that you said for most people it's a fantasy to win win an olympic gold medal but for joseph he had that fantasy but it, he made it come true yeah right yeah so i feel like okay dream would be more appropriate so for example okay. my dream is to win an olympic gold medal let's say mm. and then angel as usual will throw this in my face and say this in my face right glenn <laughs> 
your dream is to win a gold medal. Uh. That's a fantasy. Uh. Yeah, because you know yeah, I mean? yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know I, mean? I so see them very, very differently. So it's like, yeah, so it's like it's not achievable yeah. for you when you say it's a fantasy. To you me, know what dreams mean? come but true. Fantasies dream. very seldom yeah. do. Fantasy is like it's like magic. Correct. You know. So it's like I think for Joseph and uh, Colin and for me, I think it was a dream. It was yeah. their collective dream that uh, that Joseph win a gold medal and they were going to work towards that dream. Correct. But if you say it's it's a fantasy, then uh, it's it's something that's not uh, yeah. Unachievable. Okay. Yeah, anyway, let, let's go on here one last time. <laughs> KISS 92 Traffic On the PIE towards Changi Airport after Jalan Anak Bukit, there's an accident, so please avoid lane 1. Drive safe. Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. It's, uh, well, Therapy Tuesday with Dr. Geraldine Tan from The Therapy Room. And I was just like defining, you know, my idea of a dream, a fantasy and uh, fantasizing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're talking about Joseph Schooling's uh, <laughs> Dreams. gold medal. Now saying, mm. if I wanted to... To win a gold medal, and that's my dream. Uh, it's probably achievable if I work really, really hard. Yeah. If it's a fantasy, if someone says it's a fantasy, Glenn, it means, uh, Glenn, <laughs> I it's don't impossible. think so. Yeah. And if I'm talking about fantasizing about a gold medal, I'll probably be rubbing that gold medal <laughs> on myself. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I, I, I didn't hear the last part but it's okay uh, don't repeat it no need. but I, I I now understand so Glenn you're you're right in my books both words or both things are actually very very close so when Angel said you know there's a magical air about a fantasy you know to me dreams are also magical we make magic happen so that's why both words in my books are actually very very close okay mm, okay yeah. okay yeah. so i'll use dreams and today. fantasy use... fantasizing in your books what is that it's still magical <laughs> i'm oh, sure okay. yes definitely i, I think so stop. too <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> yes. Okay. Anyways, yes. anyways, so we want to let people know how to motivate themselves. So the four C's. So the four C's are consequences, competence, choices, and community. So the first one, consequences. You know, is it worth it to me? Is it worth something to me? When I achieve it, when I attain it, is it worth something to me? So most of the time when we hear um, people trying to achieve grades, um, it means nothing to them except it makes their parents happy or makes the teachers mm. happy. Mm. It, it's not worth anything to them at all. So they are miserable doing it until we are able to adjust it in their books. Mm. Um, ah, but yeah. an Olympic gold medal. That's one million dollars. This is true. <laughs> Just saying. Yes, it's a dream for many people or a fantasy. Um, yeah, so the next one is competence. Competence is am I efficient at it? So if I'm not efficient at it, can I work towards being efficient at whatever that I'm doing? So that's the abilities part of things. So where um, I think when Glenn was saying, you know, Brazilian uh, Jiu-Jitsu, you're no good at it, you know. Yeah, uh, I was so getting smashed all the time. My goodness. Smashed. Yeah. But in golf, you're not getting smashed all the time and you get your prize money at the end of it. <laughs> And not just that, I think for golf, he enjoys the whole process of it, you know, the, mm -hmm. the I love my community, yeah, yeah, the conversation, yeah. Bra 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 Brazilian jiu-jitsu, I mean, you just go in there, you spar a little bit, you don't really yeah. hang out. Although I miss it though, I miss it, you know, in my mm. mind, I'm like, I could have been better. It's more of and an adrenaline rush. And you go home and you're, you're thinking about the moves and how you can, you know, Do uh, better with outfox that. Your, yeah. your sparring partner, you know, mm. but sometimes we get carried away and we hurt each other, but. You know, it's part and parcel. Part and parcel yeah. I couldn't afford it because if I get injured, then I can't play golf. You know, Correct. So kind of like mm -hmm. choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the consequence yeah. is not worth it. 
And yeah. then you just want to wrap up with the uh, confidence and the community because we have to go. Choices. Yeah, we have to go. Choices. Oh, choices. choices. Yes. Yeah, so there's that one is choices. Is it what I choose to do or am I made to do it? And the last one is community. Community is who is with me while I do it. Hmm. Okay. Mm. The four important points. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so um, we can hold on to that. Your last words right now, Jerry. Yes. And is by Helen Keller. A happy life consists not in the absence, but in the mastery of hardships. There you go. Mastery of hardships. Yes. You know, hang in there. Overcome the hardship. For sure. Yep. Thank you so much, Jerry. That was awesome. No worries. I'll see you the week after. Have fun That's right. in Australia. Thank Bye. you. Fantasize about us. <laughs> Ciao. Stand by. The one and only Joseph Schooling is next on The Big Show and The Big Show TV. So we, we should have set up like a little pool in here or something. <laughs> like an inflatable pool. pool. Oh, there hey! Nice the early. man is in the house. So you see? Oh no, it's the first time now you're coming to this studio, right? Yeah, that's 1FM. So, I think, I don't even know where Joseph's been to 1FM actually when we were there. Not when I was there. Right? I know, I can't remember. Well, once at 1FM. Yeah, over there. Okay, there. Once over there and once over here. And I can't believe we've not met Angel. No, never. No, we haven't. Yeah, that's true. I was in the evening. I was in the evening. Anyway, it's been too long. It's been too long. Uh, we're it's already back. on uh, Yeah, we are live Facebook. now already. We're already live. Yes, Everything's on. You can say hi. So today we've uh, extended... So anything you're going to say, just yeah. <laughs> be we've careful. We've extended the Big Show TV yeah. by an hour. I'm sure you watch it sometimes. It's usually one hour. It's always and then, on our Big Show TV. Yeah, but today, because we, we really wanted to have you on the show, so we've like extended it by another hour. Whoa. Yeah, so if you're so. watching us now, if you have any questions for Joseph, just type it in on our Facebook or YouTube channel. Well, Jerry... Keep it clean as well. Yes, what's we got Jerry's a question here. for Joseph? Um, uh, we got Joseph. a couple that maybe you can think about before we go on air. What success means to you and what motivates you? Joseph, put the, the okay. cans on and see whether the levels, levels. are okay. Auntie May, you can do that as well. We're going yeah. on air now. Jesse McCartney, you just heard Make a Baby right here on Kiss 92. All the great songs <laughs> in one place. All right, it is time. We have the man himself, Joseph Schooling, in the studio. Thank you so much, Joseph, for, for coming in today. Thank you for having us. And of course, uh, me, thank you so much for coming in as well. <laughs> Mwah, mwah, and it's mwah. the first time Angel is meeting uh, the both of you today. So. I know I've met oh, uh, Auntie May before. Met yes, me. okay. met, yes, but first time. You have you know. to call her Auntie May as well. Well, I've always called May May. Oh, okay, so, well, yeah. Oh. But Joseph calls me Uncle, Uncle Glenn. Uncle. Okay, it's In a bit wow. funny, right? <laughs> you don't want me to call you Auntie May, do you? Anything, anything you will do. <laughs> <laughs> I've been calling uh, Glenn Uncle Glenn since TMCC. Remember that part four yes, over the water? Exactly. And uh, yeah, I, I, he kind of made fun of me a little bit. Is he, is he better? Is he? Are you, are you better at golf than Glenn is? Oh no, my no, god! No, no, I don't think so. Angel, uh, uh, that's a very funny question uh, to ask Joseph. You know, if Joseph weren't, uh, uh, you know, swimmer? swimming, yeah. he would be a professional golfer. Oh, uh, well, okay. Yeah, my part of me then. I'm not too sure about that one. But <laughs> <laughs> thanks, but Glenn, for you, the words. You would love to be a professional golfer. Though, right? I would love to. Yeah. Could there still be a same. pro golfer uh, future in it for you, though? I don't think so. I no? think it's I think it's about the time you have to dedicate, mm -hmm. and also the mindset, the headspace you got to be in. Mm -hmm. So to that right now, I don't think so. At the moment, I'm, no. I'm happy yeah. leaving it at it at a serious hobby. Right. Mm, okay. I, I think Glenn has a better chance. He plays golf every day. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I don't know about a better chance of being pro, yeah. but yeah. it doesn't work that way, right? Man? I can play golf every day, but still suck at it. <laughs> golf is like the hardest. I feel like it's the hardest game, man, in the world. What do you think, Joseph? It's terrible. You mm. hit ninety nine bad shots, one good shot, and you just keep coming back. Oh I my gosh, so little else. in return. So, yeah. <laughs> it's like the ROI I, I think is like all terrible. golfers ask uh, themselves why. why? <laughs> yeah, on a good day. You know everything is all right, and then you think it's going to be another good game the next time round, and it's not so good. And mm. you know it just just gets at you. You keep on thinking about it, and then you go to the range. You try and you know fix you know the areas you you, you feel you need to fix. So it's uh, it's just like um, you know you, op- you obsess over it. Sometimes. It's a mind game. The game that Very just keeps giving, <laughs> just keeps giving and taking. I'm <laughs> sure. Taking. Okay, so uh, Joseph, we just had uh, our Dr. Jerry on for Therapy Tuesday, and one of what we were talking about was what success means to each of us. So, what does it mean to you? I'm sure you've been asked this question many times. And we're going to ask you as well, me in a while. <laughs> so my mom, my mom's a very uh, advent Kiss ninety two FM listener, and naturally we listened to her segment on the way over. Okay. So we did hear a bit about this. What does success mean to you? I think it's relative. Um, success is like hugely individual. For me personally, it was winning Olympic gold. Um, one of them was breaking the world record. So unfortunately, never got to that one. But hey, you don't always hit all the goals you set out to do. Um, the other one. Well, I guess we're going to have to see what the goals are, what success means to me in the future. Mm. But at least in the swimming capacity, we're well, standing on top of that podium. Okay. But did you always believe you could win a gold medal? I did. Yeah. See. So I believed it when I was seven, and it might have been fluff. You know, like a might seven, have been a, a fantasy seven, at the time, exactly. right? Yeah. A seven-year-old has no idea what he's talking about. Mm. So. That thought has always been in my mind, nonetheless, mm. and actually to see it come to fruition, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so, n- me. so, yeah, for what me, for what me, is you and, and and Colin always believed yes. in Joseph. We believed in him. Yeah, right. I mean, when that six, seven, six, seven year old boy came to me, mommy, I want to go Olympics. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> exactly. You know, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Go, good. Go for it. And we didn't know how determined this boy is. Right. Mm. And I'm I mean, sure, I'm sure the coaches who who coached Joseph saw the potential at that very early age, and yes. and encouraged you guys to yes, to keep did. on going. Yeah. They did. That's why when he wanted to go to the states, I mean, for me it was like, hello, you're only thirteen, <laughs> you know. But <sighs> he says, I must go, mom. I guess I won't go on Olympics. Yeah, and you made well, it happen. Yeah. Mm. One more thing I'd say about that one is I think it's also got to be. You got you got to shoot for the stars, but also like be realistic along the way, right? And I say realistic because when I was how old was I, mom? Five, six. The there was a Chinese talent spotter in SICC, and what I did was take an X-ray of my forearm, okay. and you can measure your growth plates. Yeah. So they do all this analysis, all this magic. It comes back, wow. and what it tells you is what your height range oh, is, is right. going to be, what your wingspan is going to be. And from this, it gives you indicators of whether or not you're cut out for sports. Mm. Because mm. at the end of the day, you have to be realistic about your physical capabilities. Mm. Of course. Mm. So that's what I mean about being realistic along the way. You have these indicators, mm. and it's a good gauge. Of yeah. How of where it's going to lead you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Exactly. So all the signs were positive. Yeah. No, that's that's amazing. Yeah. That, that's how they identify uh, sports talent. Sport. Right. What, I had no idea what you can participate in. Because if you're not meant for that sport. Even you try, you won't. It depends on how you grow. Mm. Wow, amazing. Wow. Science. Yeah. Okay, let's continue to talk to uh, Joseph and May on The Big Show TV. It's 8.53. Okay. So Joseph, we've got a question from Joel on uh, Facebook. And um, I don't suppose this has everything to do with swimming. It could be your future it could be your relationships um how do you stay disciplined in Ooh. life so i think first we have to def- you have to define what discipline means to you so discipline for me is quite simple discipline is getting up doing something over and over again uh, even when you don't want to do it so pushing okay let's use a really realistic example working out go to the gym there have been a lot of mornings where at 5:30 I don't want to go lift weights. Mm. I don't want to go swim. But has there ever been a time where after that practice or after that weight session, 
I felt like I shouldn't have done that. Never.、Mm. It's always been 100% positive.、Mm. So you just have to get through that initial bump of the negativity in your head. It's hard.、Uh, you're not going to succeed all the time. You don't wake up motivated every day, right? No, that, that, that's just a.、Uh, That, that's a dream, you know.、Mm. That's a that's a fantasy. fantasy. Do you have a trainer <laughs> every morning, or on some mornings you have to do it on your own? No. So I I work best whenever I have someone to keep me accountable. Right. Because I'm okay getting up and doing it by myself, but to take it to the next level, for me, it works best whenever someone is showing up on time.、Mm. Someone is taking time out of their day, sacrificing things on their side. The least I can do is show up. Yeah. And show up. Well, 100, or as best as I can be. Yeah. So、mm-hmm. that's the accountability that training with someone gives me.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. You take pre-workout sometimes. Oh yeah, C4. Oh my goodness, that you know, that helps, I right. It it really keeps you focused because、mm-hmm. you just want to be focused during that one hour, one and a half hours. And if I've tried, you know, I mean, my my. I, I can't work out on my own anymore.、Mm. You know, at this point, I'm like, I need a trainer there. He's、and、there waiting for me, and I、well. and I go in, and and he knows when I'm not focused. So the first thing he goes like, okay, what do you have for breakfast <laughs> today? You know, did you take your pre-workout? Did you have enough coffee? So if I have enough coffee, I don't take the pre-workout, right? And I'm still focused. But if I'm tired, especially after the show, because the night before I I I, I go out drinking and whatnot, right? <laughs> I can't focus, and he knows it, you、yeah. know. But when I'm focused, I'm bloody focused. I'm sure, you know. I mean, you understand. Get in the zone, well, yeah. What I'm talking、mm, about. Totally. So you're in that zone. Woo. Speaking、Amazing. of which, I mean, you're out of the sporting world now. Officially done, you know, finished. Do you think you'll still be as focused on your physicality as you were before? I would hope so. You know, we can only we can only wish for the best. Yeah, because I mean, before you need you had all those goals to hit. You know, you have to be this fit, you have to be this weight, you have to have this kind of stamina. But now that you're going into venture capitalism, which is、yeah. something behind a desk,、uh, and it's barely close to a pool.、Yeah. You know, how are you going to stay as focused on your? Physical side of things. I, I think、yeah. what Angel is trying to ask you is in in a year <laughs> no, or two. No, stop saying what I'm going to try. Are you going to, to have、uh, Uncle Max、uh, tell me? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, the shorter the better. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I think I think keeping up with a physical routine is probably one of the most important things you'll ever do.、Mm. So, like all jokes aside, like yes, hundred percent, I do want to keep up the physicality of things. It keeps my body in shape, keeps my mind in shape. Most importantly, mental health is key, and. In in terms of the VC space, it's not not really behind a desk. It's、Ate、more yeah.、Mm. The reason I picked it was because I can get out, interact with people,、mm. new startups, companies, and it kind of keeps me away from a desk. Yeah. So yeah. I,、mm. I I found out real fast、um, in NS that sitting behind from eight thirty to five thirty, while it was amazing <laughs> during that time, I couldn't do this. <laughs> yeah. You know? So I wanted to get out there and actually be on the go. Because I've I've got ants in my pants. I can't sit still. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> oh yeah. Mom can mom can attest to that. <laughs> so yeah, that that's the reason why I picked this space. The, the space, yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that. When do you start? Have you already started? We've already started. Okay. So we got a couple of ventures going. On the other side, we have the swim school as well, sports schooling. But most recently, coming up, I'm still not done with the competition yet. I still have T100 this, this Sunday. Right, this Sunday.、Mm. Tell、so、us a little we, bit more about that for people who don't know what T100 is. So last year I did a, a triathlon relay. I swam about two kilometers in in Marina Bay, and I just about almost passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? You know, he says swim two kilometers, right? Everyone's going like, ah, he's Joseph School. Easy、yeah. done. But it's it's horrible. I mean, I have friends who do triathlons as well. I'm like. That's crazy.、Yeah. Two kilometers swim. So this, different. This year, thankfully,、yeah. no swimming. I'll be、That's、on a bike.、Mm. Oh, okay. And then we've got a、uh, two other relay members.、Mm. So it'll be a surprise team. It'll be super fun.、Um, but I'm just looking forward to staying dry this time. <laughs> 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 wow, that should well, be fun. All the best for that. Yeah.、Thank、so、you. that's happening at. I mean, if you want to catch anything at all, it's happening this Sunday. Singapore T100.、Uh, It's the triathlon, duathlon, and a five-kilometer music run. I mean, this year's pro races will feature defending women's champion Ashley Gentle up against reigning Ironman world champion Lucy Charles Barkley.、Uh, there'll also be a couple of gold medalists, Olympic gold medalists,、um, and、uh, 
uh, of course, Joseph Schooling will be there as well. Yeah. yeah. So that should be exciting. Now, turning to me right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, oh. May, you and Joseph have a wonderful relationship. You guys mm-hmm. communicate all the time. Now, coming back to uh, the announcement of your retirement once again, I'm sure you guys have been talking about this for a while now. Um, what happened, you know, that, uh, that, that finally made the both of you come come up with this decision um, that Joseph would would retire officially? Well, basically, I think the father and I always supported whatever his decision is. So, I mean, we discuss, right? And basically, well, it's his. Yes. Right? And if he wants to retire, he retires. Yeah. But I mean, That's he spoke to you. Did, you. did you ask your mom, like, should I? Or did you, did you know? That this is it, and did you just decide? Okay, I'm gonna tell mom that I'm going to call it. Well, quits. I, uh, I wouldn't say I asked her outright, should I retire? Because I know mom and dad's answer was always, oh, "You just go one more Olympics." You know, one more. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, Especially daddy. And before <laughs> daddy. before you know it, I'm 60 years old and so <laughs> doing God knows what. Um, yeah, so it was kind of like an ongoing conversation throughout yeah. months or even I'd say a year, mm-hmm. a year, a year and a half of, hey, I kind of have this feeling that I'm ready for the next stage. Mm. Um, I'm not fully sure yet. I guess no one really is 100% certain. Mm-hmm. But that was a conversation that we had, you know, what would the future kind of look like? What would, what would we like to shape up? What would we like to actually leave behind legacy-wise? Mm. So mm-hmm. swimming is an individual sport. Right, I've had a whole team catered around me, but I've realized that the biggest fulfillment comes from actually seeing the person next to you succeed. Like mm. that, that, that gives me a fulfillment that I words can't explain. So it was a bit weird at first. I was thinking, I was like, well, "What is this? You're getting lost in your thoughts and you know, all, all that emotional stuff." But I found out to be true. So right now, it's okay. How can we build the sports ecosystem we'd like to see? How can we move the needle forward? We can always improve. We can always get better. And I'm excited that one chapter yep. has thankfully ended. Now we look forward to the new phase. Mm. What's that new phase going to be? It's trying to get that person right next to me, on my left and my right, be the best versions that they can be. Mm. Right. And mm. coming back to what, how we started off today, success. How do you define success? Well, that's up for them. That's up to them to decide. Okay. But we will provide the best tools possible. Right. Yeah. You know, I know many of uh, you know um, these parents who have sent their kids for swimming lessons and, and a lot of them in your school, um, mm-hmm. you know, are all completely inspired by you when you won the Olympic gold medal. And I'm sure, you know, their dream for their kids right now mm-hmm. is that they, they do the same. Um, do you meet all of them on a regular basis? You know, people who are, you know, training at your school? As much as I can. So okay. we have a really good head coach right now, Jared Butler. So actually, I went to college with him. He's uh-huh. in my class. Mm. So he swims uh, I am in breaststroke and he came down to Singapore, made a huge leap, and he's enjoying himself over here. He's doing a spectacular job. And we've got a good team behind as well. So we, keep, we like to keep him busy. Don't, don't let them out too much. <laughs> but at the end of the day, Jared wants to build a team. I want to build a team that we can be proud of and the kids have fun and the kids are proud of. Right. So that's what we're working towards now. So Janet's got a question on on Facebook, and she's asking you what your take is on paper qualifications for sportsmen or sports people. Paper qualifications. Mm. How important is that? So like paper qualifications, meaning certification? uh, Yeah, academics. Uh, Man, I think that's only about 10% Mm. of what the actual task is. I think 90% is practical. It's like, okay, I studied economics in school, right? And I've heard this term, cetras paribus, cetras paribus, all over again, like all things constant. Mm. And if you go out in the real world, it's nothing like that. The mm-hmm. same thing can be applied to paper qualifications. It's important to educate people that would like to get into their respective fields. That's a starting point. But 90% of them is actually honed in on what you do day to day, how you actually inculcate that mindset or that skill set. 
So, yeah, I hope that answers her question. Yep, I hope so. Thanks thanks so much for that, Janet. Uh, Margaret's got something about swimming, if you want to answer it, about what you miss about swimming most, whether it's your mates, your coaches, the competition. What is it that you're going to miss? He only just... Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, who there else? Go. Like, he only just retired. Just retired yeah, like, like two <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> uh, I, do, I do miss my teammates, my coaches. Yeah. Like being an only child being in that atmosphere it's kind of like okay you got a whole family around you mm. right and it's not to say that we'll never see each other again but this was on a day-to-day -day basis um that's one competition kind of like the adrenaline mm -hmm. um, everything rushing through your veins it, it's a certain feeling that i'm not sure i'll ever feel again in my life mm -hmm. um the highs the highs the lows and the lows but at the same time looking back man we had one pretty cool career you yeah, know, man. I was very lucky to be able to do that. You course. were indeed, yeah. Course, but all that hard work. You were not lucky winning the gold medal for Singapore. The only Olympic gold I, medalist. I don't, <coughs> I don't know if luck had anything to do with it. I mean, yeah. it's a talent, your pure determination, your perseverance, and the, all the hard work that you put in. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think luck has like a, a little bit. A little bit. You've got to work hard. you got to work your tail. It's, right. it's when opportunity yeah. meets uh, preparation, yeah. right? Exactly. And you did yes. all that. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. You're right. You know, I mean... How different is um, uh, is competing compared? I mean, you think uh, compared to the time of uh, you know, like your Ang Ping Siongs and your David you Lim. So I'm gonna ask air. you that on air, okay? Because I still play golf with David. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Uncle David at the TMCC charity yeah. golf tournament. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for SAQ. Uh, um, okay, oh, wait, wait. hang on. We'll go on air first. Sports is brought to you by SBC Levo. Uniquely formulated for urban driving, it delivers smoother performance, better mileage, and fuel savings with every drive. SBC Levo. Fuel every drive. All the hits yes. right here. It's 92. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Get up. You get out of bed this instant. And turn it on. Glenn, Angel, and the Flying Dutchman. The Big Show on Kiss 92. And May Schooling is asking, where's the Flying Dutchman? Of course, yeah. she knows where the Flying Dutchman is. How are you, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk to him. He's probably yeah. watching right now. Are you watching us? <laughs> Be good, okay? You have to recover. Oh, my goodness. Yes, Look please. at her. <laughs> yeah. He's recover horizontal now. Yeah. Yeah. Horizontal. Um, Uncle Mark is, yeah. Yes. He, he feels a lot of pain sitting up and, and even and when walking, he stands yeah. up. So. So, yeah, we're quite sure it's We a must live disc. vicariously through Uncle Mark right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not at his current state, but yes. <laughs> Our guest for this morning, and we're so honoured to have him on the show because uh, he's been so busy. Joseph Schooling is in the studio together with Mom May Schooling. Welcome once again, guys. Thanks Thank for having you. us. All right. Now, Joseph, uh, let's uh, get straight into this. I, I, You know, we've been talking about this, but I, I think there's a, a whole bunch of uh, new people who are watching and listening to us right now um what made you decide to retire oh i think everyone comes to a point where they start finding happiness and fulfillment in something else and first it manifests as uh, hey i'm starting to feel this way um is it actually is it actually real but it quickly transforms over time every day day in and day out into okay this is actually what i want to do so I kind of hit that point where I've accomplished everything that, or almost everything that I'd like to do in the sport, enough to where I was satisfied, enough to where I was proud of what I'd achieved. And it was time to flip the page and turn the chapter. Right. Mm. So you mentioned uh, what makes one happy and fulfilled. What do you think makes you happy and fulfilled now, if yeah. it's not swimming? Exactly. So earlier on Facebook Live, we were talking about um, swimming being an individual sport. Mm. Right. Now it's time to turn to a team sport mindset about how you can work together in this ecosystem, how you can scale new heights together. And I've had a whole team surrounded, uh, surrounded me. Now it's time for me to take a back seat, have the next generation, have the person next to me succeed in the way that he or she would like to. Mm -hmm. Right. We talked about success. Mm -hmm. Let's see what that definition of success is individually. Right. Mm. What kind of pressure did you feel after you won the Olympic gold medal? Because obviously, after winning one, you know, the nation was probably expecting, expecting you to perhaps maybe win another one, the mm. following Olympics, right? And But what what made it so difficult, yeah, Joseph? I, I think everything goes on in your, in your own mind, right? Like everything is just perceived or it's a, it's a fugazi, fugazi. And right now, the tough part is when you're not prepared 
when you know that you're ill prepared, when you know that your practices aren't up to where you, where they should be, mm -hmm. that starts playing tricks on your mind. Mm -hmm. So it can really quickly compound exponentially the negatives of hey, I should have done this, I should have done that. But if you're in shape, if you're where you want to be, you actually don't feel the pressure. There's no pressure to be felt. Mm -hmm. So it's all about preparation. Right? Mm, yeah. And what was that feeling when you did win that uh, first Olympic gold medal for Singapore? It was surreal, actually. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was ecstatic, you know. That, that's the weird part. It was more of relieved. Relieved that, you know, mom and dad sacrificed a lot. Um, I sacrificed a lot in terms of going to the U.S., having to change this whole, like, acclimate uh, the different culture. So it was kind of like a, a time lapse, 10 years down the line, everything we've given up, and holy smokes, mm. we, a we actually made it, you know? Right. So it was more relief than anything. I think FD is not li may not be watching or listening right now, but Michelle is. Yes. So Michelle oh, okay. says good morning to, to the both of you. Yeah. Morning, Michelle. Morning, Michelle. <laughs> okay, let's continue to talk to uh, May and Joseph on The Big Show TV. It's 9.09. We've got so many people saying how proud they are of you uh, and thanking you for everything that you've done. So remember to go back and read all these messages once you're on Facebook. But a question, how do you handle, these are all positive comments, obviously, but the negativity out there? Because social media gets us from everywhere, whether mm -hmm. it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you know, yeah. but how do you handle that? Because you could have like a million um, compliments and all it takes is it's for like 10 or negative one comments even. And, yeah, and it one could even. you know just you know really bring you down yeah exactly so I think different athletes have different ways of doing that um, the most common one is delete social media mm. don't don't read anything online mm. uh, I know a bunch of people that do that uh, I've tried doing that before uh, it works but at the same time I'm able to leave an app on my phone without having to open it oh you right know? oh you're one so, of those with discipline okay so, <laughs> so I, I chuck i chuck it in the back of one of the folders and okay. you just don't pay attention to it you just try to be as present as possible i used to go on uh, yahoo and read all these comments of after 2012 about, about yourself yeah well about how like singapore never win an olympic gold medal yeah. and i use that as fuel so it cuts both ways right, right. Mm. if you know yourself and it's going to affect you you know what you need to do don't look at that stuff right. mm. but if you if you're a michael phelps for example and you take quotes as motivation day in and day out then that's another way, that's another way to do it as well mm -hmm. so it depends you know i've seen a lot of formula one drivers like before they race they've got the headphones on and they're you know they're just pacing up and down because whatever it is they're listening to whether it's music or motivational speeches or ted talks or whatever it is did you have uh, a ritual before jumping in the pool yeah so i used to put on um some very explicit music <laughs> before, before i jumped in um not safe for work hit, type of music <laughs> yeah not safe for work um anything anything to just get me pumped up uh but before that the night before usually just movie night i used to do that with uh, surge in high school mm. he used to put on this movie called the peaceful warrior by 99.9 percent .9 of people never heard of it before but long story short it was about uh, this u.s olympic gymnast went through a really bad motorcycle accident, broke a bunch of bones, oh, wow. uh, somehow came back to mind over matter and made the Olympic team. Wow. So I do believe it's based off a true story. Mm. And Serge was kind of, he, he loved all of these like meditative movies right. or um, movies with sublime messaging. Mm. Uh, it was pretty cool. So and it worked. <laughs> it worked. The wow. Peaceful worked. Warrior. Yeah, I've the just written it Yeah. Maybe yeah. Apple Movies. Maybe. Yep. Nick Maybe. Nolte stars in that one oh, too. Oh, yes. so. okay. Uh, okay. Good show. Pretty good. Yeah. Definitely look that up. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Back on air. So, okay. Stand by. Last top set. Okay. I'm not giving up on you. I'm not giving up on you. Give 
in upon you. Dean Lewis, trust me, mate, right here on Kiss 92, all the great songs in one place. Our guest for this morning is Joseph Schooling, and he's in with his mom, May. Joseph, you've retired now. Everyone's done interviews with you. Um, Straits Times, I watched your interview with Rohit. Um, wonderful interviews. Uh, thank you so much for taking time to come in and, and, and be with us today. I know many, I think, other radio shows have, have wanted you, uh, you know, to be a guest, but uh, you, you are very busy. You know, despite being retired now, you are very busy. So I would like to ask you how your, your days have changed uh, now that, that perhaps maybe you don't have to train that much. Yeah. So, um, yeah, how, 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 is your, how have your days changed? I, I'd say the biggest thing that's evolved has been I mean, spending considerably amount, amount of time in the office, you know. Mm. So we pull about 10, maybe like 8 to 10 hour days. But it's not because uh, I have to be there. It's because I want to be there. You know, it's a, it's a space I get to share with mom. Yep. We got some really good, really good people in the office, and it's a nice, nice atmosphere. It's a nice so vibe. So mom just makes sure everyone's working. Mom yeah, just of makes, course. makes yeah, sure yeah. everyone's working. And, and yeah. fed, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, yes, everyone yes. gets their coffee, yeah, right. their rest, and you know, some good food. <laughs> Tuning in to Kiss ninety two yeah. Facebook <laughs> Live oh, every always, morning. Oh yeah. You know, yep. I just want to mention so the sweet. the movie that you said you watched the night before uh, you had any competition or that Peaceful Warrior. It's actually from uh, 2006 and it's available on Amazon Prime. Mm. So if you want to stream that, you can watch that. Pretty okay. good movie. Yep. Right. It is. And you were saying. Uh, so besides the office, also trying to trying to meet more people, uh, learn the ropes of this new space. It It's all about going back to being a student, right? And actually in swimming, I'll, I never stopped being a student. So using what I've learned, lessons mentally, uh, going into the working world, it's about time management, discipline, like this, the same lessons that we've spoken about before, but applying it to a different field. So trying to navigate those intricacies is actually what makes me excited right now. It's mm -hmm. trying to learn a new craft. I feel like a four-year-old jumping in a cold pool with mm -hmm. 30, 30 other people suffering together. You know that saying, misery loves company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so. It's, it's almost like you're starting this whole journey of becoming a champion once again. Yeah. You know, like his, his seven-year-old self, or however, how, how old were you when you said you wanted to win? Seven, the, you're right. Seven? Uh, your seven-year-old self, but you're starting this at the age of 28, just saying, this is my new journey, and I'm going to excel. Exactly. And um, I've been lucky to meet great people along the way. Um, people that want to help, people that have good mm. intentions. And it's kind of expedited also my learning process. Right. right. So it's up to me how successful I'd like to be in this field or what I'd want out mm -hmm. of this next stage. But when I look back, I cannot under any circumstances say that I wasn't given the tools to do so. I wasn't afforded the opportunities to do so. So it's up to me to make the best out of it. Right. And how do we take what I've learned and also pass it down to the next generation, the youth athletes coming up throughout Pipeline. Right. That's something I'll be looking forward to doing as well. Okay. And if you have some time, you know, along the way, uh, we've got to get a golf game in. We do. <laughs> so we got we to gotta get an air right now, Glenn. So three, three, three strokes each oh, nine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. The other way around. <laughs> no, no, Maybe Glenn, a little bit Glenn more. Glenn plays every day. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is every day. He plays but, but, five times a but, day. But you know, me and my khakis would love to play with you. Um, we'll get a game in. Maybe yeah. around at war. We'll, we'll, we'll negotiate the terms if there's surrender, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking also, forward to it, my man. Before I let you go, before I let you go, mm. um, one last thing. So, you've had a wonderful manager all this time. Mm -hmm. Rhonda. Yeah. yeah. yeah Big cheese. She, Mm -hmm. I, I, are you keeping her? Because if you're not, I'm, I, <laughs> he I, I wants want to take her, her for myself. <laughs> no, she's mine. She, she, she's <laughs> all oh, mine. you can you share. Can. Both of you can share. Don't fight. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm not going to sharing. Mom. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to sharing. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure Rhonda can recommend someone else. Though. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, Rhonda's sweet. We've been friends for a while now. Yeah. Okay. So um, before we before we let you go, I, I just found out we we've got to do this uh, right now. But we know we want Joe to see if. If you can guess what it is, remember oh, we were I saying, see. yeah. Okay. We've got a game going on. It's yeah. called Guess the Song. It's we only play second. one second. Yeah, cannot. The but song. She's like, so it's ridiculous. Is it someone it? solved it yesterday, yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. 
th- th- on th- Joshua's that prize show. money's been won. A thousand four hundred dollars it was. Yeah, that was. Ooh. How can so they? It's Inside the information. No, no, no. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> only that one person knows. Only our boy right knows. Stephen. Stephen. Yeah, yeah, so only, I should get Stephen. to Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's try and figure this out and, 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 and see whether you can, right. you can guess what song this is because we have no idea. One second of a new song because the other song has been solved. Okay, let's go, Cheyenne. <laughs> That's it. That's it. For a hundred And we bucks. can only play it once. That's it. Yeah, you've had your chance. Because I think maybe I played it five times <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Somebody got it, you know, in the evening. Yeah, but it's a song we play on Kiss ninety two. Hey, should we play again? Mom, you should know. Okay, one more time. One more. Oh. <laughs> that, yeah, because you're listening all the time, right? Okay, one more time. <laughs> okay. It's almost, it's almost like no. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> it should be like ten seconds. It, then, oh my goodness! Then what you would be the point it? of that? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> all right, there you go. Let's guess the song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> brought, to, brought to you by Prop Next and uh, Kiss ninety two. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's time to let Joseph go. Thank you so much, uh, Joseph, for joining thank us you, today once again. Thank you, Joseph. And me, thank you very, can, very can much. Can we wish your mommy happy birthday? Oh, yes. oh you heard that? So sweet. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> so sweet, mom. You're listening. Me <laughs> and Joseph just wish you happy birthday <laughs> that's lovely thank you so much and and you both have a wonderful day ahead okay thank you and all the best thanks, uh, for this weekend joseph cheers man thank cheers. you the time right now is 9 19. kiss 92 time check brought to you by putian